the Rebel Capitalist Show. Okay, so now you're writing your, your blog post. You're probably frustrated for the first six months because you're on the, the Google Analytics and it's not showing that you're getting a, a huge spike in traffic. But from a mindset standpoint, you've got to stick with it knowing that it's, it's, it's a long-term game. And if you continue with that consistency we talked about, then it's going to compound and compound and compound. And then maybe over the next year, then the numbers double. But over the year after that, then they quadruple. And once they start going up, then what's the benefit to that? So, I mean, so what? So I've gone from getting 10 viewers per day up to a thousand. What, why is that beneficial for me? I mean, people would automatically will say, okay, I can monetize it. But then, I mean, yeah. how does that work on a blog? I mean, do you start yeah. advertising or I mean, how, how does that even, how does that even work? How do we connect those dots yep. uh, when, if our end goal is to either have a, a sustainable side hustle that can um, subsidize our, our job or give us more spending money, more disposable income, more security, yep. or maybe even replace our existing jobs, give us a lot more personal freedom. I think the first thing is um, if you're trying to replace your job, I think you have to set a certain number. Like once I hit this income, you know, with the side thing, I'm going to quit, right? Obviously, if you have family, you're going to have to have a discussion there. And when you're growing those views from zero to a thousand to five thousand to ten thousand, maybe um, go into the progression. I mean, do you start? Let's say you got a thousand. Do you start by creating a digital product, or do you start by advertising? Is it different strokes for different folks? And then yep. maybe we can go through some numbers that would, um, I know it's probably all over the map, but I was going to say, you know, pe people that you work with that are at 10,000 views per month, let's say they have the ability to make, you know, this range of, of money. I think that's really important yeah. for people to know because it seems so abstract for most people yeah. you know, making money. So on I'll break it down this way instead. Um, so, you know, one thing we should all think about when you're when we're making an online business is that we should be collecting emails because email is one channel that we can own. You know, you don't know if Facebook's going to ban you, Google's going to ban you, or Instagram is going to kick you off, whatever. So focusing on email collection is really important. Um, and because you can blast, you can, you know, hit up your email list whenever you want, you know, give them more value. Um, but also every, maybe like every, you know, four times you get, you provide value, you know, one time is you're asking for something, right? I'm just giving a, a rough, you know, template you can follow. Um, so, you know, in general, the number back in the day, and I think this is still relevant is for every email that you collect, you should be making at least $1 a month off of that email. Mm -hmm. So you collect 1000 emails, maybe you're making a thousand dollars a month, right? Uh, you know, obviously if you have like a finance newsletter and you have really smart people, um, you know, subscribing, you can probably charge a premium on it. Um, but that's kind of a barometer there. Now, when you ask about visitors, it's different, right? Whether it's visitors depends on the niche um, because, you know, CPMs from an ad perspective, cost per thousand impressions um, you know, varies, right? Same thing with YouTube ads as well. Uh, so what I would say is, you know, once you start to get a little bit of volume, you go from zero to 5,000, I used to think, oh my God, it's time to monetize, right? Um, but usually what I found was that you know, the time to monetize is usually a lot longer than you think it is, right? So you start to get it going. Um, maybe you get up to 20,000, you know, 100,000. You're still not going to make a lot of money. So you might as well play the long game and not think about monetizing for, you know, two to three years or so. Because I'll tell you with the, the Leveling Up podcast, I didn't monetize for four years. With the Marketing School podcast, and I'll be transparent, um, you know, Neil and I just on that, the podcast advertising alone, we have a contract for about $800,000 a year, and that's all profit split between two people. Um, and so, you know, we didn't take any, we didn't try to monetize How any bit for three and a half years. You do with Neil? For about four and a half years. It's four and a half years old. Yeah. And we didn't monetize for about three and a half years. So, yeah. you know, we didn't have our events. We didn't have our virtual events. We didn't have the ads. Now we have all that and we can do even more because now we have volume and we have a we have a community now um, that's very vibrant. So, you know, all this to say is, um, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. That's that's the lesson there. Focus okay. on collecting emails and then providing as much value as you can, and do it over a sustained period of time. And then all the money is going to come to you because the most valuable thing you're going to have is a brand slash community. Yeah, and that's something that you've got for for the long term. Yeah. And another huge benefit is you can take it with you 
wherever you want to go. Okay, so for review, we start the blog, we start doing content, uh, enough content to make sure that we can play the long game and we can maintain this marathon pace. I think that's the best way to, to look at it. And then we just focus on delivering as much value as we possibly can to the audience. And then we're not worrying about monetization because we know that that's gonna take care of itself long-term. We just focus on delivering value. And then after three, maybe four years, now we've got this asset that we've created and this community and throughout the whole time, we're driving people to an email list so that, that we've got uh, you know those people that we're corresponding with directly through email. And then we try to ask ourselves, okay, how can I deliver even more value to my audience by creating some sort of product? You've got your email list, you let them know that it exists and bam, you start uh, the monetization process. And throughout this um, journey, at what point do you suggest bringing on like a virtual assistant or maybe someone to help you create the, the blog posts? And what's maybe the pros and cons of setting yourself up as the brand compared to the, the business? I know a lot of people don't think about that right away, but like my YouTube channel, George Gammon, my Twitter is George Gammon. It's all these things. So I mean, how could I ever sell that business? I, yeah. I probably couldn't sell it to you yeah. because it's all about George Gammon, where if I would have called it single grain, yeah. as an you know, then maybe you've got some more optionality there long term. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, on that one, I mean, um, it's it's definitely much tougher. And, and Neil and I have talked about it on the, the Marketing School podcast. Funny enough, all his stuff is Neil Patel. His company is even Neil Patel Digital. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it is... I think there's certainly a lot of value in having a personal brand. I think my take on it is I will always use it to, you know, I could have a premium on that. I will generate great cash flows. And again, you know, take the same playbook. You know, I don't need to go out there and raise money. I'm raising money through my personal brand. Um, you know, you look at Tony Robbins, right? It, I, I think across all his companies, it, it's about $6 billion a year in, in sales, something like that. Um, and he's got a personal brand. And so I don't know, um, you know, Neil's mentioned before, it's like, oh, like you, you, you can't, but what about like, you know, you have, uh, you have names in Michael Kors or Versace or whatever. I'm just making things up now. Um, so I think there's a time and place for, it. I, I feel like for the most people, for most people right now, there is definitely space to become a micro influencer and build a personal brand. And I think if you're trying to build a company for long-term, you probably want to use the company brand. Um, but that's my take on it. Okay. And what do you think about, I mean, we talked about YouTube for video. Uh, podcasts and, and then blogs. What do you think about the other social media? Yeah. That, um, is that a waste of time or is there value there? And when I say other, I mean, yeah. um, not TikTok. just Instagram, Facebook, but like Snapchat and now TikTok and all these things. At what point is it just not a good use of your time? Yeah. So I think, um, and by the way, we were talking about blogging quite a bit, but I want to caveat this because blogging is one of the most competitive things, um, most competitive things you'd be, you know, dipping your toe in right now because there's over a million blog posts being pumped out every single day. Now, it's a red ocean, but if your industry is not as covered, so let's say it's around pets or let's say it's around survival, you have an edge because Google needs more of that content. Just like how Google has said in the past that they need more content in other languages. It's just, you know, English has been quite filled up. But if you think you have an edge and you have something different to say, definitely, and you love writing, think about blogging or think about Twitter. You got to think about where your audience is hanging out. What's the most open medium right now? If that's the most populated, is what's yeah. the most open? Is it podcasting or YouTube or video? Yeah. So, you know, the red ocean right now would be blogging, but uh, blue ocean would be podcasting because as of about a year and a half, two years ago, there are only 700,000 podcasts um, in the world versus over a billion blogs, right? And you look at the difference there, what do they say? A million is what, you know, a couple of weeks, 11 weeks or so, and then a billion is 31 years. So think about that difference. Um, so podcasting is great. Um, and if you're doing YouTube videos already, naturally you can convert it into podcasts as well. So you might have two things right there. Okay, so if, if you've got the ability to do audio, that yeah. might give you a, a leg up just right off the bat would, and, or maybe even combine that with your other content. But going back to yeah. the uh, social media stuff that, you know, like the TikToks and the yeah, yeah, yeah. chats. And I, I mean, because a lot of people I know that get into this, like, okay, I'm going to do my blog posts and then I'm going to shoot it out on Instagram and Twitter yeah. and this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And it's like, yeah. dude, you're spending so much time on that. You could have created another two blog posts. 
Yep. So, yeah, it's it's hard. It's um, you know, in the very beginning, I think, especially if we're just starting out a business, we're thinking about, oh, how can I do everything? You see everyone else, you know, doing all these different things, um, but they're in their chapter 25, you're in their chapter one. So it's best to just focus initially and then get some traction. Um, feel like once you have something nailed nailed down and you're scaling it, you can move on to the other stuff, right? You know, Apple started out with the computer first. They didn't start out with the iPad. They didn't start out with, you know, the iPhone and all that. So it's the same thing as business. It's just take your time. It takes a lot longer than you think it will. And the people that are, are ahead of you have been doing a lot longer. And, and that's what it is. You just got to stay patient with content, just like you stay patient with investing. So...